vengeance. I shall have no mercy. Hello guys and welcome to another video from Oscar Kuba. I hope you were all well. Um, we're doing a Warhammer uh, Games Workshop Best of PC Game video. Now, I um, don't get concerned. I'm not deserting you PS4 gamers at all. I just have a big passion for this side of the, of the business and um, have recently just got myself a pretty powerful gaming laptop. Um, so I'm, I'm enjoying a lot of RTS PC games and a lot of Warhammer games and I've, I've sort of addictively buy them all and um, have got a bunch together for you five. Uh, what I think are the strongest are currently available. And there's some pretty recent ones on here and there's one on here that's coming to the PS4 very shortly so keep your ears peeled because it's coming up. Um, just quickly before I go forward, I, uh, I got the news today, it's the 25th of May, uh, that Total Biscuit aka Cynical Brit has lost his very long battle with cancer and uh, that was devastating news for me. Uh, I love that guy, he's an inspiration, showed me a lot of the real-time strategy uh, PC games that I play today. Uh, he's a commentator on StarCraft 2 etc. I, I, if you don't know of him, have a look. I'm going to put his channel link in the description and he made my top five gaming YouTubers of all time video which I'll also put in the description for you. Big loss um, and uh, yeah let's uh, let's crack on. We're looking at Dawn of War 3 and uh, this is very low on the list. This is a pretty recent game. Uh, there's a few reasons why I'm starting with it. I'll go into them now but uh, yeah this is a Warhammer 40,000 game and real-time strategy. So I'll explain a little bit about that uh, in a second and I'll show you some of the gaming footage. So the Dawn of War series has gone through quite a lot of changes. Okay it's it's got a bit of a checkered past. Well the reverse of that. The, the first Dawn of War uh, 1 was really was a very, very good game. It was a really base, uh, sort of centric, classic RTS, you know, in the vein of StarCraft or anything else like that. And, and it made a real name for itself. Relic got it really right. And everyone was like, this is the RTS we've been waiting for that pays homage properly to the 40k universe. This one is leaning towards a sort of hero uh, RTS. I'll go into that in a second. But I want to just touch on the fact that how well rendered these models are. That That's one of the things I, I like about the game is that it is the best looking uh, Warhammer 40k RTS on the market. It, it's the most recent and it, and it shows, man, it's so good. It's like a childhood dream come true. Operating these mammoth uh, sort of vehicles and titans, uh, also in conjunction with your hero characters, is, is amazing. The game's very flashy. It likes to sort of show off with explosions and a lot going on. And I'm, I'm running this on quite high settings as well. It performs very well. But it's, it's all about, you know, that timed special that you've got built up. You can't really control individual soldiers, etc. But I mean, they've tried to sort of claw it back a bit, but a lot of people aren't keen on this game. But it, it scratches an itch for me. It, it, it does what it's supposed to, to do, but uh, just in a bit of a sort of ad hoc way. I, I would prefer it lent more towards Dawn of War 1. Dawn of War 2 uh, also had some cover based mechanics as well, it was pretty wicked and you could hide behind stuff and get stats, bonus stats from being in cover. This has carried over a little bit, um, but yeah, it's it's okay, it's great looking, you know, if you want to just have a really slick looking Warhammer 40k game, this is the one. We've got both the Dawn of War games out of the way, um, and I went and put Dawn of War 2 above Dawn of War 3, mainly because of the sheer number of races that you get to choose from. I mean, you've only got three on Dawn of War 3. This, you've got 
uh, Jean Steelers and Tyranids and you've got uh, the Imperial Army and you've got Chaos more to the point as well they're both brilliant to fight against and to fight with uh, as characters and, and the Jean Steelers and Tyranids it's, it's crazy the sort of the cool skins and the cool maps and the cool units that you get to control Order. now this one is, is, is again shedding its base building heritage even more so than Dawn of War 3 but this one for me it's kind of has got, I've got the, more of a whiff of Dawn of War 1 because of that sort of infantry unit control that you're given with the game and I also like the idea of that heavy cover based mechanic in the game yeah it does lean again towards the hero style but it's not overdone it's not overcooked like it is in Dawn of War 3 it's they're, they're, they're pretty cool the commanders and you know some of the bigger units it's great to get them in um, but but what I love is just the variety of enemy that you're fighting the fact that this has got a lot more races in it and and some of the cool power-ups and moves and I remember on Dawn of War 1, you would be able to upgrade almost an individual unit, and with this, that, that's kind of possible as well. You can actually put different sections of armor onto the captain, and you can upgrade your dreadnought individually, and the, the, it, it's pretty cool stuff. And uh, again, um, it's got a, a pretty healthy multiplayer still, and this game is older now, um, quite a lot older, so you can run it on full spec easily on a, on a sort of mid-range system. Um, it's just a funny game as well. A lot of the stuff that happens with the hero units from the AI and the other team just coming marching over and you're quite point focused as well with this. So you, there's two sources of currency requisition uh, and of course there's electricity power and you have to use them both in conjunction with each other. So the maps are very to and fro in regards to capturing these points but there's the annihilation mode which I forgot to mention has also just been added to Dawn of War 3. What that means is you just have to eliminate each other's bases as a opposed to just take over on points level. It's also got upgrading on individual units and unit types. They level up the longer you keep them alive. I love that idea and there's more uh, a sort of strength in them when that happens so it, it, it pays to keep a, a platoon alive or, or get them XP'd you know. Uh, Dune did that I remember really well a long time ago but yeah as a closing comment this game is still awesome and I feel it's stronger than Dawn of War 3 so definitely check it out if you get the chance. One of our initiates is Brothers, the first scans of the Space Hulk have revealed a Dark Angel ship that dates back to the Age of Heresy. So yeah, Space Hulk, uh, especially the Enhanced Edition, we just had that drop in. And this is the one that's coming over to PlayStation 4 really shortly. So pay attention to this, because this is a goddamn really good FPS with, with bits of like Left 4 Dead in there and stuff. It's, it's well done. Hulk, reaching this ship is your primary concern. Trust your battle brothers to deal with the rest of the Olethros. Brothers, retribution is at hand. It is our strength. We are the sons of Caliban. Let fury guide your weapons. Let vengeance be your song. We are the angels of death, and our enemies shall fall. So if you don't know, Space Hulk is a, is a tabletop game um, in, in the 40k universe, so it's all the sort of cool future stuff. And, and I just want to go over this Enhanced Edition. It's given me what I craze with this game, and it's like customizable stuff for your main character and changing all the armors and slotting stuff in and out. Um, one of the also important things about this is, is its visuals and the way it looks and, and the space holes themselves. They did not fuck that up and it looks really great. Like, they're like gothic church like huge halls and just there's all kinds of places where these, these things can come and get you. Um, there's three characters, uh, an option of having an AI controlled uh, uh, two people with you and you can allocate and position them and, and give them various tasks etc. This is a great game and if you're worried about what the gene stealers look like.
Yeah, the, the, the good news is that the combat really works. Uh, it, it, it really works. Um, they've, they've really made this game tight on an FPS level, which is, good, which is not an easy task because uh, Space Hulk's come out before. It's come out as like turn-based games. It has tried to be a decent first-person shooter, but no one's really nailed it. And these guys did a damn good job. It, it, it's, it's fluid, but at the same time, you feel chunky and empowered. That, that, I think that's kind of the, uh, the sort of paradigm that they've been trying to jostle with. At the same time, you, you don't want to feel restricted, but you also need to feel like a Terminator, you know, shuffling down a corridor, that sort of claustrophobic narrowness of it all. So it's a very good game, and uh, I enjoy a lot of the unlockables, ranking up, and sort of getting various stuff going. You can upgrade your AI um, companions, and you can also upgrade your psychic powers. You've got a few. You've got like a pushback, and you've got like a um, telekinesis uh, bolt of lightning, and you've also got some swap in, swap out options with these as well, with some flame uh, inferno stuff. And the recharge on them is really quick, almost like a Diablo quick. So you you, you kind of never really caught out. But it's uh, it's pretty frightening, and I love where these things appear from, and the way they sort of scurry in, and and there'll be a lot of horde moments where you'll be having to protect an area, and it will just ramp it up, and they'll just pile them in. Left 4 Dead was the last time I had this much fun with a game like this, uh, and it's going to be brilliant multiplayer online with on the PS4. <laughs> So number two is is Total War, uh, Warhammer, uh, Warhammer Two Total War, Warhammer Two Total War. This isn't the 40k universe, okay? So we're sort of going back to the old school, to the traditional uh, work games workshop characters and lore. And uh, I, I aren't very good at uh, Total War games uh, as a tradition, but this one really surprised me with how accessible it is and how beautiful it is, and uh, sort of how much it leans towards being an RTS uh, as opposed to a vastly complicated, you know, battle simulator. It's uh, it's got a very strong single player campaign as well, but I. Find a lot of the action. There's some cool quest-based skirmish missions where you can just literally you don't have to worry about that world map. You can just go straight into a, a battle scenario and it and it puts all the units in and gets everything ready for you. It's uh, it, it's incredible on, on a tech level when you're spinning all these plates on the battlefield and pushing in you know different unit types and and just juggling a massive wall from above it's, it's crazy it's really cool to go down on the ground level and get a look at everything and you can see here that my archers just got in range and they all just unleashed on this big battle in the center it's also got some weird crazy like horde style uh, overrunning tactics from the enemy AI these are the Skaven and they just come flying in and you've got a you basically just get surrounded by them it's awesome and it's it's great I'm, I'm a big fan of just sort of perving over the bigger game models in this game you know, I, I love having two huge dragons fight each other and, and the ragdoll physics on the little guys going flying around and and just the sheer size of scope that it gives you against these monsters and the men and, and the, the Batman environment itself. I, I, this We're at number two, so this one kind of beat uh, a, a lot of the previous games by, by quite a long way because for two reasons. I was so surprised at how accessible it is and I was really pleasantly surprised at how beautiful it looked and, and how much fun it is to play. There can be no victory. The darkness always returns. Legends tell that these words were spoken by Sigmar, the first emperor. 
Yes, it's Berman Tide 2 is my number one Warhammer game currently. Well, my favourite in regards to playtime and, and the one that I am most addicted to currently. The first one of these games was not very good. Um, they sort of wanted to get this sort of melee-based FPS out there. It, it was a bit rushed, but this one is incredible. It's great. Full online, four-player co-op, multiplayer, of course. And these characters, I think, is what the first thing that won me over. There's a, there's a, there's a cool variety and... Uh, uh, ranging from the dwarf to a sort of range-based elf, and, and and the first thing that struck me is is how good it looks, how well it runs. Uh, again, I'm 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 not on a on a very powerful system. I'm putting this on ultra, and it's looking great. And the horde mechanism, very much like Left 4 Dead, a little you could put this next to Space Hulk in regards to that sort of system. Um, but it's just brilliant the way it handles a lot of stuff on screen, a lot of the different range weapon types with each character. You've got mages in there, you've got archers in there, you've got soldiers in there as you can see with the traditional rifle and just the weird puzzles and stuff that it gets you involved in and the environments. This this game is very good looking, it, it performs very well. How cool is this Chaos Warrior coming over the, the, the crops here with his, with his axe? I mean, it's uh, it, it's just beautiful to watch, let, let alone play. And, and it goes right back again to our sort of crazy left for daddy, gonna die any minute it got to slash everything in front of me uh, you know it's just it's just truly mental this game I think it's what the developers wanted Vermintide 1 to be and so it's good to see some great uh, additions put in here it also does quite well with uh, character development uh, and, and unlocks and infantry it, it, it's got quite a big pull in regards to unlocking new stuff that you're going to get and I, there's rumours of this coming to console I think it's, it's selling quite well and I, it wouldn't surprise me if it does because um, it's great uh, and strongest of all of these if, if you ask me and that's saying something because Space Hulk is almost the perfect Space Hulk port for me but this was something completely new again I'm not massively familiar with the, the traditional Warhammer lore or any of these characters but I, I just felt so at home here I loved it straight away you know and uh, going online it's really easy it's really slick uh, and I'm really looking forward to potentially this coming up on console and getting my mates involved because uh, it's brilliant so I'm, I'm going to say thank you very much guys and um, thanks for getting this far as well on, on the videos. Of course I will be putting out some PlayStation 4 content very soon. I'm currently working on some more co-op games. I'm playing a bunch of them at the moment so I'm getting my homework done uh, ready to unleash a new video on that front. So uh, as always uh, see you down there. Get involved in some Warhammer games if you're a PC gamer and don't have any of these. Give them a look. Thanks very much guys. Take care.